Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be talking about what is inquiry-based learning in mathematics and it's a question that I've been asked by several people and forums in online discussions so if you're interested in hearing my thoughts about what is inquiry-based learning in mathematics then please keep on watching. Okay so recently I've been engaging in some really interesting discussions in online forums about what is inquiry based learning? Is it the best method of instruction to help students learn? All sorts of other questions like is direct instruction better or are there other pedagogical uh, methodologies that are actually better? Now I don't have one single definition of inquiry-based learning of mathematics. So in my school partnerships we actually co-create a common understanding of what we value in terms of effective mathematics learning. And very often that involves students exploring and inquiring. So some of the main themes that come out from these discussions are that inquiry-based learning must give students agency and ownership of their learning. That's the first point. Second, that students are at the center of the learning process. And thirdly, students arrive at their own deep conceptual understandings. So we do not rob them of that exploration and experience of arriving at deep conceptual understandings. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't use direct instruction to deliver low level facts and skills and algorithms and formulae when they need it. We do not want to rob them of arriving at deep conceptual understandings themselves. Now, I just wanted to share some of the ideas that we've been discussing in my school partnerships with different math faculty and some of the themes that we've come up with. So what are some of the themes that we've talked about? We've talked about creating a culture and community of inquiry within the classroom so that students help each other learn that idea of knowledge mobility. Students are focused. They ask questions to further their understanding. There is active participation and active listening and active learning. So they're not just sitting back and receiving information. Another thing that's come up is that learning should be exciting and engaging. And there should be a task or a problem or scenario or provocation that sparks the interest of students so that they are more motivated to persevere and to want to solve the problem. Uh, another theme that we've discussed is that learning must be purposeful so that when we do inquire into an area of mathematics, that the learning experience is purposeful and produces enhanced learning outcomes. So it just can't be a lot of fun and, and paper cutting and, you know, wasting time doing that. But the learning experience must be so carefully designed that there is a purpose, an intention, a context, and it leads to enhanced mathematics learning. Other themes that have come up are that questions is really important as part of the process. And they may be questions that you pose, or they may be questions that a student generated. It's lovely when we actually ask our students to generate questions based on their curiosity, because I think that that can drive the learning process and it can actually help engage and motivate students more. We also talked about the themes of having individual work when it's appropriate and very carefully designed group tasks when it's appropriate as well, and encouraging that idea of productive struggle. But there's a fine line between productive struggle and frustration. So you as a teacher have to step in and step out. And it's like a dance, right, between direct instruction and giving some prompts and giving some questions to students to, to push them along the learning process or to step back and say nothing. There, it's a fine art, I think, and it's a dance within the lesson because we normally respond to the questions that are posed, the struggles. So the productive struggle, I think, has to be very, very carefully handled. It's not productive struggle, hands off, unguided inquiry, uh, open discovery. You find things up for yourself and students are really frustrated and they don't make progress in their learning. And another really important theme, I think, um, in terms of effective mathematics learning under the umbrella of inquiry mathematics is that we should provide a variety of learning experiences. So there are wonderful tools like Desmos, GeoGebra, 
we want to be able to use all of these different tools at different times according to if it's going to enhance the understanding of a mathematics topic at the time. So a variety of uh, experiences could be the different levels of inquiry. Sometimes you can have open inquiry, very few situations. You can have purely open inquiry. Most of the time you'll have structured or guided inquiry. Uh, you may be looking at different tools such as Polypad or GeoGebra or Desmos. You may be also looking at problems on a vertical non-permanent surface and students are solving problems around the classroom. But then there might be lessons where you have projects and students are working in pairs or they're working in small groups and they have specific roles that they have to fulfill. So there are my ideas about effective mathematics learning and what inquiry-based learning means to me in terms of mathematics. Again, I want to reiterate and emphasize that it's something that I think you should co-create as a math faculty or department because every school has a different culture and context and all teachers bring valuable knowledge and experience to the table. So really important that you co-create your own understanding, common shared understanding of inquiry-based learning in mathematics. Thank you so much for joining me this week. If you have any comments, please feel free to put it in the section below and I hope to see you next time.